Hello and good morning. It's your home for worship and the word. K-Wave 107.9. Encouragement, life lessons from the Word right now as we come together live. Several options for you. You can listen right here on K-Wave, which we appreciate, or watch us as we stream live on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Let's welcome Pastor Leonardo Figueroa from Real Life Calvary Chapel in Lakewood. Good to see you again, Pastor. How's it going? Great. Thanks for having me. Excellent. It's a blessing to be on here. Yeah, well, well into the holiday season, and, um, you know, it, it's, it's been a crazy kind of year, people out of work, um, yes. and wondering, you know, when, when this is all going to let up. But do you have encouragement from the Word? I do. In Psalm 3725, um, David writing, and David living just an incredible life, and we'll go into that in a minute, but he says, I've been young, and now I'm old. And yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendants begging for bread. And when you look at the life of David, how he was just a young shepherd boy, pretty much homeless in the shepherd fields, you know, tending to the sheep. God met him there. God provided for him there. God covered him there and protected him there. Then, you know, David goes and uh, kills a giant and, and God is with him there. And then he's raised up into the throne and um, God is with him there and Throughout his failure with Bathsheba, God is still with him. The Bible says, actually, in Acts, where David, uh, God says that he was a man after my own heart, and yet God was still with him. And God uh, never gave up on David. And David basically is on his deathbed, dying of disease. And he charges Solomon, his son, to take care of the kingdom and to not look to the right and to the left. And you can just imagine David's life just completely just, wow, what mm. he has seen. And what, and yet he says, in all of that, he says, I've been young and now I'm old. And I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging for bread. Mm. And we look at our, our life today. We look at what's going on today. I was looking up on my iPad just a minute ago, the current unemployment rate of the rate was in October. So it's definitely higher now, but it said 12.6 million people are out of work today hmm. in the holiday season, you know, 12.6 million people. And they're also saying that uh, on the 26th that the unemployment benefits are supposed to end. And so I'm sure there's a lot of people with a lot of fear, a lot of worry, wondering what's going to happen. What, what's going to, what's Lord, what's going to, What's going to happen to us? How are we going to survive? I would just say to you, a child of God should never worry, right? Because according to the Lord, according to his word, I've been young and now I'm old. And I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his descendants begging for bread. And this is time for the church. This is time for believers, time for people that are going through it to really cling on to the promises of God and to really hope in them, you know, and believe in them, not just know them here, but believe in them here in our hearts and to really just start applying it. And, and as hard as it is, as dark as it gets, God will always remain faithful. You look at this, the darkest times and darkest moments in scripture in people's lives. God never left them hanging. Mm -hmm. God was always faithful. And so he'll remain faithful to you. He'll remain faithful to me. God's not going to ruin his reputation on me or you. <laughs> yeah. God is just good. And so yeah. that's it. Let's pray. Please. Father, thank you so much, God, for your word. Lord, and I know, God, it's scary. I know it's difficult in, these, in this season, Lord. And I know that, Father, um, many are hurting. Many are discouraged. And, Father, I just pray that you would bring encouragement to them, that you would pour mm -hmm. your love and your grace and your mercy upon their life. I pray that they would look to you and you only, Lord, not look at their circumstances, but to look to you and to trust in you. And so, Lord, we love you and we thank you that you have our back. We love you and we thank you, God, that you're not going to let us drown. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor. We're out of time right here on K-Wave, but uh, Pastor Leonardo Figueroa and I are going to continue our conversation on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. So make sure you join us there if you're not there yet. Um, and here on K-Wave, Pastor Greg Laurie wraps up the series Water, Fire, Stone. It's coming up next on A New Beginning. Yeah, Pastor, um, I think we're reevaluating as believers the things that we were counting on when we didn't realize we were counting on them so much. You know, back in the early, early this year even, 
when, when the hint of coronavirus was just happening, we're just starting to hear about it. Not in a million years would we have thought that we'd end up where we are now with uh, right. what you said, 12.6 million people lost their jobs at the beginning of the year. We probably thought, you know, I, I can count on going out, going back to work tomorrow because I'm doing a good job and the economy is great. Um, my business is doing well. So, you know, it'll be here tomorrow. And here we are now. And countless restaurants have gone under because of, of the lockdowns. Just just great numbers of people have have uh, have lost their jobs. But you're saying we can still have faith and joy in the Lord that he will provide. And he promises that, doesn't he, in the Bible, that he will provide our needs? Over and over, over and over. Look at God's track record. Over and over. He has yeah. not been unfaithful. He doesn't know how to be unfaithful. That's part of his characteristic. God is faithful. And um, mm. I just taught, you know, what we're going through the book of Joshua on Wednesday nights. And, and um, when you look at the history of the children of Israel, they, you know, wandered in the wilderness. In Joshua, they're in the promised land, obviously. Forty years before that, they're wandering in the wilderness. And at the end, uh, it says, that, I believe it's in Numbers, that their sandals didn't wear out. Their clothes didn't wear out. I mean, whatever brand that was, that's the best (laughs) brand that there is. But, you know, like God just, they, they didn't lack anything. He gave them manna. He gave them, he gave them quail. He gave them a pillar by a pillar of fire by night, a pillar of cloud by day, and just covered them and sustained them water from a rock. He parted the Red Sea, part of the Jordan River. And now they're entering into the promised land. And they're eating of the fruit of the land. And the Bible says in Joshua 6 or Joshua 5 that the manna ceased. And they just were able to eat of the fruit of the land. And when you look at God's faithfulness, when he makes a promise, he's faithful to his promise, especially to his people. Hmm. And so um, I, my encouragement, you know, I, I'm in a situation, too, where I'm just like, Lord, I need I need to cling to these promises, God, and I need yeah. to really believe that you are going to, because I can look at my circumstances and I can, I'm human, you know, I, I, I'm a pastor, I teach the word, I know the word, but I have my moments and I just want to be armed. I want to be sustained by his faithfulness and by his goodness. Yeah. And um, I'm just thankful to the Lord that although I might be unfaithful, he never is. And that he will remain faithful always. Yeah. Always. I think it's a wake up call um, for us believers to just look at the things that we were. Uh, I, I tended to um, think that my, my hope was in, in the Lord, and it is, and it was, but it was in a lot of other things too that I, yeah. never, I never realized until now. And looking back, and you know, that we've, we've lost so much. Um, it's a wake up call to believers for sure, but what do you say to those who are who 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 don't know the Lord right now, maybe listening, maybe just kind of looking for hope anywhere they can. It's no accident they're listening to here on K Wave right now and they're watching this video. What do you say to those people who have maybe lost their jobs, maybe lost hope and uh, just trying to cling on to anything they can to find comfort in uh in the season that they're in right now? I would say to you, first of all, that God loves you so much more than you could ever imagine. And no matter what you've uh, experienced, no matter what you've gone through, that's never changed. Mm -hmm. And um, there is hope, and it's found in Christ. The hope that you're trying to look for in a job or in material things and all this stuff, it's futile. You you, you realize, you understand that that can be taken away like that. Um, but the Lord is so good. He's so faithful and he's so loving and so gracious. And without him, there is no hope with him. You have all the hope in the world. Uh, I'm reminded of this great quote by Charles Spurgeon, where he said, said, we can afford to live without Jesus, but we can't afford to die without him. And so the most important thing is all these things, the earth, will pass away, everything will pass away. But when we stand before the Lord, when we stand in his presence, we want to make sure that our sin is forgiven. Yeah. We can afford to to lose work and all these things because God can restore all that back. 
But when you die and you breathe your last breath, that's it. And so I would say to you, man, if you don't know Jesus, you need to surrender your heart to the Lord today because it could be way worse. You, you, you could be on a ventilator right now fighting for your life. You could be in a worse situation. And um, I would just say to you, turn to the Lord. There is hope. It's not the end. It's not the end. God will turn this around. This too shall pass. And the Lord will remain faithful as he always is. And mm -hmm. so surrender to him. Maybe he's brought you to this place to come so that you would come to the end of yourself so yeah. that you would surrender to him because he loves you. Yeah, that's it. And probably the next question on their mind is, how do I do that? How do I how do I reach out to the Lord and accept him into my heart? What do I have to do? Well, I'm going to lead you guys in a prayer right now. And if you'd like to do that, then you go ahead and just repeat this prayer and um, mean it with your heart. And it's a simple prayer of faith. Hmm believing that um, Jesus took care of it all for you. All right, let's pray. Father, I just thank you. What a blessing it's been today just to um, be on K-Wave and to just share your word, Lord, and to bring hope and encouragement. Um, and Lord, I just pray for that person uh, that's listening right now, God, that just doesn't know you, and they're scared. They're, they're, they're hopeless, God. They don't know what to do, but they know that you've been tugging on their hearts, and they know that right now, Holy Spirit, you have spoken to them, and you have drawn them in, and uh, I just want to encourage you just to pray this prayer and surrender your heart to the Lord. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you to cleanse me of all unrighteousness, and I know, God, I know that I'm not in this position for nothing. I know that you brought me to this place in my life to this moment right here on the radio, Lord, to, sur to surrender my life to you, to save me, to change me. And so, God, today I ask you to fill me with your spirit. Come in and live within me. Change my life from this day forward. Help me to live for you from this day forward. And, and, and Lord, uh, I surrender it all to you. And I ask you to be the Lord of my life. And I choose this day to follow you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Thank you, Pastor. And if you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. It's that Amen. easy. It's that easy. Amen. But we don't want to leave it there, you know, kind of leave you hanging. Like, where do we go from here? Can um, can they reach out to your church? Yes, they can. Actually, um, you can reach out to us via email at Real Life Calvary. And that's Real Life with one L. It's kind of grammatically incorrect, but... <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. It's Real Life Calvary at gmail.com you can also go to our website uh, we have a Facebook page and an Instagram and a YouTube channel and we're a small little fellowship the church plant we're church planting in the midst of a pandemic how about that that's People's awesome prayer that's awesome <laughs> so but um, yeah it's it's we're, we're here to serve we're here to minister to you would love to have you come and visit it would be a blessing and by the way there's a party going on in heaven right now because Amen. because you accepted Jesus into your heart. It says that right in the Amen. Bible. The celebration is going on for you. Pastor Leonardo yes. Figueroa from Real Life Calvary Chapel in Lakewood. Uh, the website, again, reallifecalvary.com, reallifecalvary.com. That's the website. You can reach out to them. Pastor, thanks so much for the prayer and coming together with us this morning and putting things into perspective as far as our needs and wants and, and how uh, God will meet our needs every single day. Appreciate it. Amen. And be encouraged. God loves you and rest on his word and his promises. Thank you, Pastor. And Merry Christmas uh, to you. Merry Christmas to you, too. God bless you. And come together with us tomorrow at around 825. We'll have more devotions and prayer. Charles Morris from the K-Wave program Haven Today will be with us. And right now on K-Wave, make sure you join Pastor Greg Laurie in progress on a new beginning. Until tomorrow, K-Wave family, trust in the Lord. He will provide your needs. God bless you.